Hi, this is uh, Rob Kelly, and this short PowerPoint video uh, is going to talk about your psychological foundations and what happens when you're firefighting. Psychological foundations and firefighting. I want you to think of your primary limiting beliefs, your primary limiting beliefs, as your psychological foundations. These are your psychological foundations. These are the foundations of your psyche, the foundations of your mind, the foundations of you. These three things, these three primary limiting beliefs, which remember are your locus of control, your self-esteem, and your social anxiety. These primary limiting beliefs, the first three or four chapters of um, the main Thrive book and the Curia Metaphobia and Thrive book, these are the most important things for you to work on going through the program and get your scores down and get your uh, your foundations your psychological foundations as deep and as stable a quick review then here on the thrive factor board so your locus of control how powerful you feel or the, the belief you have about the skills and resources you have to make things happen in your life and to overcome things in your life how powerful you feel about the things that happen in your life, and whether that's an internal feeling of power or an external feeling of power, that has a big effect on your social anxiety and your self-esteem. And your self-esteem has a big effect on your locus of control and your social anxiety. And your social anxiety has a big effect on your locus of control and self-esteem. So these three things, any changes in any one of these three things, will affect the other two. Your self-esteem goes up and you feel more powerful and your social anxiety goes down. If your social anxiety goes up because you have an embarrassing time at a party, your self-esteem goes down you feel less powerful. If your locus of control becomes more internal, your self-esteem shoots up and your social anxiety shoots down. These three things, locus of control, self-esteem, social anxiety, are the cornerstone of the Thrive Programme. These three things you want to work on a lot, far more than anything else. Get your self-esteem up, get your locus of control far more internal and overcome your social anxiety. If you look at this beautifully um, drawn uh, tall building here, you'll notice the grey area at the bottom is that this building has strong and deep foundations you get the impression that this building will sustain any bad weather, not alone that little wispy little bit of wind that we've got in the drawing here. But this building has strong and deep foundations and it can sustain any adverse weather conditions. Or anything that happens to it, it will stay permanently strong and still. In this next picture, however, with very, very weak, short, low, uh, poor foundations, any adverse weather, anything happening to this building, and it's going to rock and roll and it might bend over, it might even fall down. These are your psychological foundations. You cannot build a tall, strong building on a couple of feet of porridge or a couple of feet of custard. Any slight adverse weather or any slight challenge in that person's life and that building's going to crumble doesn't matter how good you are at managing your thinking or how good you are at firefighting, come on to that in a second, if your foundations aren't deep and strong, you're going to keep coming unstuck. Looking at this slightly adjusted stressometer here, you've seen the stressometer before, what I've done with this stressometer is put some little fires on it. When people, particularly people like emetophobes, those sufferers of anorexia, OCD, ME, post-viral fatigue, these kinds of obsessional um, symptoms and anxieties. These people tend to have a very strong desire for control. Not locus of control, desire for control. And when someone's got a strong desire for control, as in they want a lot of control, but they don't really feel they've got any, i.e. they've got a poor external locus of control, they put a lot of effort in to what I would describe as firefighting. So particularly with emetophobes, they spend a lot of their lives in a highly anxious stress state, even though they're incredibly successful at avoiding 
the thing they fear, being sick, being around someone who's sick, they are still full of anxiety because they have so many anxiety-provoking thoughts. They live with their lives very close to the red, with their needle in the red. They spend their days putting out fires. The most common question I get asked from uh, an emetophobe or someone with anorexia or OCD going through the program is, how do I stop these horrible thoughts? How do I stop these intrusive thoughts? How do I batter away these intrusive thoughts that I keep having? My answer is always the same. You don't want to be worrying about the intrusive thoughts. You don't want to be thinking about firefighting because your life is always going to be full of stress. Instead of asking, how do I keep putting out these fires, Rob? You ought to be asking, how do I stop building fires in the first place? How do I stop having these intrusive, horrible, obsessive, anxiety-causing thoughts in the first place? The answer to that is much simpler. You get better at managing your primary limiting beliefs. If you keep your needle, your stressometer needle, low on your dial by feeling competent, by feeling in control, by having high self-esteem, by having low social anxiety, by having a really internal locus of control, and by a really internal locus, I'm thinking a score of just five or six or even less. When your stressometer needle is low, you're not firefighting all the time. You're not worrying all the time about where the next thought is coming from. And metaphobes particularly are really the most successful people I've ever met. And I've treated thousands of them, either directly or indirectly. The most uh, um, successful people I've ever met or worked with in terms of their safety-seeking and avoidance behaviours. They are really very, very good at effectively running away from thoughts they don't like. The difficulty with it is, though, every thought you have of a safety-seeking or avoidance nature creates anxiety. I've got to stop this thought. I've got to get away. I can't expose myself to this. I can't take the kids into school today because there's a bug going around. Although all of these thoughts are inciting you to action to do something, they're also creating the very anxieties that you're trying to run away from. Much, much better to invest more time in the first four chapters of each of the books and create and build an internal locus of control. Feel competent, feel skillful, feel resourceful, feel in charge of your life, feel powerful in your life and stop thinking and believing wrongly that life is just somehow happening to you. The most obvious examples, of course, of the external locus of the troll, particularly with the metaphobia, is A, your belief that a metaphobia is something that happens to you, which of course is nonsense, and also B, the fact that you believe that you're your self-esteem and your social anxiety are caused somehow in your past, which again is nonsense. Your social anxiety and your self-esteem are never more than a couple of weeks old. They are created by the beliefs you have today and the thinking styles you use in relation to those beliefs today. None of this is about your past. It's all about what you perceive, what you believe and the way you think in your lives at the moment. So, to avoid having intrusive, horrible, obsessive, anxiety-provoking thoughts, don't get better at firefighting. Don't focus on, how do I bat these thoughts away? How do I stop these thoughts? Instead, you want to get better at creating an internal locus of control, overcoming your social anxiety, and creating and maintaining high self-esteem for yourself. These things are easily achievable with the exercises and the actions in the first uh, four or five chapters of each of the books. I hope you find this helpful.